Today we're going to be making a Chinese classic, Sichuan style dandan noodles or dandan mian. A humble bowl of wheat noodles with a lip smackingly creamy and spicy sauce topped with minced meat and pickles. This dish has gotten pretty popular all over China. You can even find it in Japan where it became tantan men, one of the more popular varieties of ramen I believe and it's one of the few more authentic dishes that has even made its way into, you know, the Chinatowns and sort of more traditional Chinese restaurants in bigger Western cities, you know, outside of Asia. And what I want to do today is we're going to first, of course, learn about and pay respect to the original, only to then do the unthinkable, which is making the same recipe, only using Italian spaghetti and Italian pasta technique. Can this go well? We'll find out. This is the long awaited part four of my series on Sichuan food, one of the big culinary families in China. This series is sponsored by Ming River Sichuan Baijiu. Baijiu is China's number one distilled spirit and Ming River is the first brand bringing the authentic Sichuan style Baijiu to people outside of China. More on that later, but now let's make some dandan noodles. And of course the first question would be, what are they? And the answer is actually in the name. So this is what dan dan mian looks like in Chinese. This part over here means dan, to carry, to schlep on your shoulders, while this one means mian, noodles. And while that might sound like a slightly unusual combination at first, that's actually exactly the origin of these noodles. Back in the day, in Chengdu, the capital of China's Sichuan province, food vendors were carrying these two baskets with ingredients and then setting up a pop-up eateries, as we would call them today, all over town. The locals, as well as the vendors themselves, started calling them dan dan mian, or carried noodles as far back as 1841. That's the earliest mention I could find. And you know what? There's not that much more to the story. They're just damn tasty. A quick and simple snack in the best way possible. And obviously they caught on. And it's exactly that simplicity that makes them a great meal to recreate at home. No tricky equipment needed. But which recipe to follow? That is actually a much trickier question. There's this great video by Trevor James, the food ranger, where he walks around Chengdu and tries one dan dan mian after the other. It's an amazing video, you should go check it out and you'll notice how no two bowls of noodles are ever the same. And of course they're not. This is not like Chinese banquet cuisine or anything. There is no formal recipe. Everybody does them differently. And in fact, I think that is exactly how street food should be. That's what makes it great. And so I did what I always do in this type of situation I checked out around like a dozen recipes and looked for the common thread. And guess what? The result I got was actually pretty close to the Dan Dan Mian Fuchsia Dunlop features in her book The Food of Sichuan. Hands down the best book on the topic. So we're gonna adapt that with just a few extra tweaks. Let's start with some good news which is that most of the ingredients you'll need will probably already be in your pantry if you do a lot of Chinese cooking. We'll get into them as we cook. We'll start with the meat topping. For that add some cooking oil or onion oil, which is what I'm using for extra depth, into a wok or deep cast iron skillet. Now add some ginger and fry until aromatic. Then go in with the minced pork and a bit of Chinese cooking wine. Beef or chicken thigh are definitely acceptable alternatives or even shiitake mushrooms. And for the cooking wine, just leave it out if you don't want it, no big deal. Now we're gonna get to the one ingredient and I promise there's only one that is very common in dan dan mian but very difficult to source outside of China and that is ya cai. It's a special type of pickled mustard green with a mild and unique taste, but fortunately there's a pretty decent workaround for it, I think, and that would be mustard green stem pickle, which are a bit different, but I think they work just fine here and you will almost certainly find something like this at your local Asian grocery store. This is what they look like and if you mince them very finely, they will look like this and be perfect for adding straight into our minced meat and giving everything a good stir fry. For seasoning, we'll add some sweet bean paste or hoisin sauce if you like, then some light soy sauce and an optional drop of dark soy. This meat sauce is actually something close to the sweet salty umami jajang sauce, which you might know from Korean or Chinese jajang mian. With the one exception that we added pickles into this one. Making a topping like that is absolutely essential for dan dan mian, but they don't only have a topping, they also have a bottoming. 
What I mean by that is that the street food vendors are gonna have like a dozen or even more different condiments around and they will scoop a little bit of each into your bowl. But yes, you can make special requests always. And then they're just gonna slap a handful of noodles and some meat sauce on top, which is gonna make the noodles look quite pretty until you inevitably mix them up. But for homestyle cooking, I really think it makes most sense to just mix everything together and then add that sauce into the bowl. Now, normally the dominant ingredient in your Dandan Dan Mian sauce will be chili oil, but let's say you don't have any. Let's make a very simple version ourselves. First, grab yourself a heat proof container and add a spoonful of chili flakes. Good quality Sichuanese peppers like Arjingtiao would be the ideal choice, but if all you have access to is a regular Asian market, like in my situation, then I would actually recommend going for Korean chili flakes, which I think on like on average tend to have slightly better quality than the Chinese ones. To those, I'm gonna add a bit of freshly ground Sichuan peppercorns, then covering everything with hot oil and while it's bubbling hot, add a drop of Sichuanese or any other dark Chinese vinegar. Now the creaminess of the Dandan Dan noodle sauce comes from sesame paste. I'm using a Chinese variety here, but you can absolutely go for an unseasoned tahini day taste almost identical. Again, we'll add a bit of light and dark soy sauce for seasoning and just give everything a very good mix. Next, just grab any type of thin wheat noodle from the Asian store. Fresh is best, but dried is totally fine. There's usually a ton of different noodle options at your Asian grocery store and some of them might even be labeled Dan Dan Mian and I guess they'll be fine, but I always find these labels a bit confusing. I think all that matters is the shape, the grain, the alkalinity, and possibly the flavorings that have been added into the noodles. In our case, as long as it's a thin, non-alkaline wheat noodle, I think we're good. Cook them until nice and not overcooked, usually just two minutes or so. Get them out and make sure to rinse under cold water for a few seconds. A very common addition for a bit of balance is pak choy, which you wanna quickly blanch in the noodle water. And if you're smarter than me, you'll do that while the noodles are cooking and not after. Finally, spread a few spoonfuls of sauce over the bottom of your bowl, add the noodles, the meat sauce, and drizzle some extra seasoning and if you like some extra chili oil over the top. And don't forget to garnish with a few finely minced scallions. These, my friends, I think are pretty authentic traditional dandan dan noodles. They look almost too good to eat, but unfortunately that's part of the process, mixing everything together inside the bowl before slurping up this creamy, spicy goodness. Oh, oh, it's spicy, painful in a good way. Oh, the meat sauce is good. It's very authentic. It's very close to what I know from the streets of to be honest, not Chengdu, but other places in China. So that mixing of sauce and noodles inside the bowl has always been something that I think makes sense if you are the person selling one bowl of noodles after the other on the streets. However, as you might know from Italian cooking, mixing pasta sauce and pasta on the stove is something that makes a whole lot of sense, especially for home cooks. And that brings us to this episode's big question, right? Is it possible to make Sichuanese Dandan Dan noodles with Italian pasta and technique? We're gonna answer that question right after a quick word from this video sponsor, Ming River Baijiu. Look, Dandan Dan noodles have helped to put Sichuanese food on the culinary map all over China. And Sichuanese style Baijiu has done something very similar, but in the world of drinks. The distillery that makes Ming River Baijiu called Lu Zhou Lao Jiao actually has hundreds of years of tradition, but it was only in the 1950s that they released the first textbook on on how to make Sichuanese baijiu. And that definitely put that style of baijiu on the map. It became a huge thing all over the country. But the fun thing about Ming River is that they really like to play around with non-traditional ways to drink baijiu. Kind of like what we are about to do with Dandan Dan noodles, by the way. For example, they created a few fancy baijiu cocktails and drinks. And here's one of them, the street food mule. We'll start with a long drink glass decorated with a rim of chili salt. Into that, we'll add 40 mils of Ming River baijiu, 30 30 mils of passion fruit juice, 20 mils of lime juice, just a bit of simple syrup, and we're topping off with Paloma Pink Grapefruit Lemonade. It's not that I feel a lot of the spiciness, there's just a little tingle, but the salt kind of comes in and mellows out the sweetness and the sourness, and that, that is so good. 100% recommended. If you get your hands on Ming River Baijiu, definitely try making the street food mule. This really is a delicious and unique drink that really accentuates the fruity and tropical notes of Sichuan style baijiu. If you wanna get to know the flavor of the original Sichuan baijiu, Ming River is definitely the way to go and it's available in the US and Europe. Make sure to check out the link in the video description to find out how you can get your hands 
on this guy. But now let's make some Italian dandamien. As I mentioned before, we're gonna be using the exact same ingredients except for one. We'll swap out the Chinese noodles for some good quality Italian spaghetti. Outrageous, I know, but I have very high hopes, so let's see what happens. I'll start by dropping in my pasta into some boiling water. And unlike with Chinese noodles, you definitely wanna make sure to generously salt the pasta water. Now, while those cook, we're gonna prep our pasta sauce on the side. I'll start with scallion whites, fried in some onion oil, and then adding the pork and ginger first, then the mustard stem pickles to get our meat sauce, but this time I will actually not make a separate sauce, but instead mix all the other ingredients straight in the pan. Now transfer your 80% cooked pasta, yes, it must still be very, very al dente, into the sauce. One of the key techniques in Italian pasta cooking is to use that starchy pasta water to create a slick and smooth emulsion. And that is exactly what we're gonna do. Add it in and mix vigorously, after which we're ready to plate up our Italian style dan dan mien and of course garnish with some freshly sliced spring onions. Come on, you can't tell me that doesn't look amazing, but what does it taste like? This is really good. This is far better than the other version. Good spaghetti make amazing Chinese style noodles. These noodles work better than any other kind of quick noodle that I have ever bought from an Asian supermarket. Guys, we're changing the game over here. We're changing the game. Now, in case you couldn't tell, yes, I did expect those to taste pretty good, but I did not expect those to taste straight up amazing, like incredible. I would love to see a lot more experimentation in cooking Chinese noodle dishes like that. So, I said, I know that you have a lot of friends who have a lot of friends. I know that your dan dan mian is very beautiful, very beautiful, right? But I still want to challenge you to use the dish that you have in Italy, and you can make a dish that you have in the house, and you can make a dish that you have in the house. Dan dan mian, you will definitely like it. I'm sure. Thanks for watching, everyone, and I'm going to see you in the next one.